Hi everyone, Ansible has been used to perform compliance checks on various operating systems such as Linux, Unix, and Windows servers for a while now. It has also been used in recent days to perform CIS compliance checks on network equipment such as Cisco and Juniper routers and switches. While most of the end targets are usually physical servers, uh, network equipment, and or virtual machines, it is also possible to make use of Ansible to perform compliance checks against um, Kubernetes systems. In this uh, video, right, what we are trying to show is that we can work alongside with um, Kubebench to perform CIS compliance on Kubernetes platform. So if you were to look at the GitHub um, web page of a uh, Kubebench, it is um, actually, um, you can find it under Aqua Security. Right, it's a uh, part of that uh, repository, right? So Kubebench is really a Go application that checks whether Kubernetes is deployed securely by running the checks documented in the CIS compliance benchmarks. So um, the test results will look similar to this, right? What will happen after that is that um, there are many different um, Kubernetes benchmark support that uh, one can use a uh, Kubebench for, right? So GK, EKS, and the various uh, benchmarks. Um, in this case, we are going to test it against the uh, 1.5.1 uh, benchmark. Right. So there are instructions over here on how you can actually um, run the appropriate command right, to get it to um, perform the actions that's required. Right. So, um, and they also show you how you can actually run it uh, within the uh, Kubernetes cluster. What we are doing here is that we are really orchestrating this uh, particular flow right, using uh, Ansible playbooks. Right, and uh, we will be driving it um, using um, Ansible Tower uh, in particular, right? Um, over here, this is uh, the collections for um, Ansible for Kubernetes. We are using this as well um, in today's demo, right? In particular, we are using the uh, KS uh, block to pull out the logs uh, information um, inside the uh, port, the Kubebench port that we will be deploying, right? So. I mean, mainly if you were to go and look at the playbooks itself, what is inside, right, is really just um, looking at how we will be creating a namespace to spin the port uh, if it does not exist. And then we will deploy the uh, code bench, right? So if you were to go here, you can look at the task. Um, um, one of those things, right, is like depending on which one you're running against. Um, and after that, uh, we will deploy it. We'll wait for the uh, job to finish running, right? And then uh, we're gonna figure out which port, right? It's uh, inside of been created before we retrieve the logs uh, from the um, port and then sending an email to us uh, at the end of the day, right? So this is mainly what um, this is doing. The playbook is uh, quite straightforward and relatively uh, simple, right? Um, so now let's uh, look at um, the environment itself, right? So if you were to look at the target uh, which I have built uh, using Kube ADM, right? This is a Valina Kubernetes uh, environment running on top of uh, CentOS 7, right? So if you check the current state, you can see that uh, it has been running for a couple of days. This is an all in one, right? We have a Docker as the container runtime. Right, these are some of the ports that are running. I am using Calico, right? Um, underneath for the network. Um, so the Namespace that I'm really going to be using this time, right, is uh, the KS compliance uh, namespace. Uh, right now, it's not there in the system, right? So uh, Ansible is going to check and create uh, if it does not exist and spin the Kubebench uh, port inside to run the job, right? So um, you can obviously give any name that you want. Uh, so this is just something that uh, you know I've decided to use. So the next thing that we will do is that we will come in back into Ansible Tower. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm coming in as the uh, security engineer, 
right? Um, what will happen, right, is that the security engineer will be able to access a certain sets of uh, playbooks, right? You can see over here that it's mostly related to uh, hardening, uh, for instance. In this case, uh, we are going to look at the uh, CIS compliance for the uh, KS uh, platform, right? So projects itself, I am pointing it to my Git repository, right? I'm getting it to clean up, delete on update, and make sure that you always do a, a Git pull before you um, start the job itself, right? So at the end of it, right, I'm going to send myself right an email on this. So you can see over here that uh, this this is my test uh, Gmail account, right? There is no um, email insight at this point in time. Uh, the automation itself is going to do a check and after that uh, send the email um, at the very end. So over here we are starting the job. Um, as you saw earlier, right, the code bench is capable of doing um, the checks on multiple systems. Right? So today I'm just going to test against my local instance that I have uh, built using a Coop ADM. Right, instead of um, choosing master or node, I, I'm just going to select everything. Right, so it just uh, check through all the policies that is defined, and this is the namespace that I was telling you guys earlier on. Right, so Ansible is going to create if it does not exist. So we we'll next, we we'll just check to make sure that everything is good. We we'll hit the launch. So you'll see that. It is initially in a pending state uh, because it is um, just going to the uh, Git repository to pull down the um, playbooks and information as well as uh, getting the collections uh, from uh, Ansible Galaxy right, for this particular uh, community dot uh, Kubernetes Ansible collection. So you can see that it has started the workflow. right? Um, over here, we are generating the required uh, YAML file, right? Uh, for us to deploy the code bench, the CIS uh, namespace for running this uh, code bench pod has also been created since it wasn't there, right? And then we are just waiting for the uh, job to become um, inactive, right? Um, why we are doing that? Okay, before that, right? Let's just uh, check again, right? The namespace, you can see that it is up. You can see that the pod that is inside, right, the code bench uh, pod, uh, and then uh, we can look at the job, right? You can see that it is uh, running, right? It has been up for about a minute. So what we are doing, right, is really just to um, check um, to make sure that. Um, it is running the checks against the whole system, right? So that's why over here, we are just waiting for the job to become inactive, which effectively means that it has a uh, reached completion, right? So Ansible itself is just tracking the status of this uh, particular uh, port. So we have a um, quite a fair bit of uh, different uh, modules available for Kubernetes, in case you're not aware, right? Um, the most common ones that we are using is uh, the KS, uh, KS info, for instance, right? Those are able to help us to create ports or to uh, retrieve information uh, about the ports from the from the uh, namespace, uh, for instance, right? So we can do quite a couple of stuff uh, with that. So this is actually going to take a while to uh, complete. Uh, I'm just going to uh, fast forward the video at this point in time, just so that we don't have to spend time waiting. So okay, at this point in time, the job has completed, right? Ansible is able to detect that the job has been completed and that uh, what it does is that it really just, uh, yeah, it's, the whole thing has gone through. But if you were to scroll up, what you can see is um, it pulls out the name of the port, right? And after that, um, it pulls the logs from the code bench port before sending out um, a bit long. Um, the email right with the logs um to me 
Right. So at the end of the day, what will happen, right? Upon completion of the job, is that you get a email, right, from uh, Ansible Tower, right? Um, in this case, I'm um, using data center to send to myself, right? This is another test uh, account that I've created. So if you were to open it, now you can see these are the results of the test, right? So really it's not uh, very different from what is uh, shown over here, right, in the uh, Git repository. In fact, it looks uh, exactly the same, right? Because we are just uh, retrieving the uh, logs from the port. So how it looks like is that it actually gives you information on um, what you can do, right, to remediate, and after that, uh, a summary on what are the checks that passed and failed. So it checks through the XCD uh, as well, um, right? It depends on really what are the options that you've selected. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these are just uh, one way in which we can uh, run the checks, right? Um, so I hope you guys um, have some ideas on what can be done right in future and you might want to try something out as well using that thank you guys for watching the video thanks